Yes. All right, MJ, thank you for being here. This is an honor. I really, and I mean this seriously. I, I love listening to your podcast. I love um, when you interviewed me and when you interviewed Murray. It was uh, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Well, I mean, I, I enjoyed both those interviews immensely. And, um, you know, um, you know, Murray was first and, Yep. Then you sent me that text and it was great. And then you came on and it was a blast. You had your rocking shoes on and, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's an honor. And and I just, before, I just want to thank you like for that message. You like when I, also that text message I got the other day, uh, when you were in Mississippi, man. So thank you for, for, uh, yeah, you got me driving. I was driving from my son's school to be at Ole Miss all the way up to St. Louis. And, uh, I listened to the Lisa Peretti Brown one, and uh, that was that was a good one. I try. Some are better than others, but it depends on the guests. You know, like you and Ray were great guests. Sometimes I got, but Lisa was awesome, and yeah, that was you know uh, that you know so when I sometimes when I think about who I've gotten to talk to and knowing that um, we're going to talk about my guest. Like and talk about. We're not going to talk about. You know, we're you know we get to Clarice, but we're not going to talk about the brand. We're going to talk about your life and the fact that people are comfortable and we and we can get in rapport and and share things. Uh, it means a lot. It's a lot of fun uh, to help uh, get to know people because that's actually what I I'm doing when I'm. I don't even like saying interviewing. It's like conversations, but uh, you know, getting to know people. Yeah, and um, so uh, along that line, um, and I mean, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about, and, and we'll go ahead and just start with that. And then I actually had a list of questions for you. We can do quick questions maybe at the end, because uh, you always start out people uh, with a group of quick uh, quick questions there. But you're interviewing, I think, and I, I read a couple of things about it. First off, I think you do a brilliant job with interviewing people. And I know when you said that when uh, you're told that, it makes you want to do better. You want to go back and you want to be like even more uh, than you are currently. But I think your real skill tends to be listening to people and responding, not just having this whole list of things. How did that come about? Because that is, we all like to talk a lot about ourselves, <laughs> but um, but you listen. Um, there, there's a lot to that. Um, but I, I would say the, 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 the real genesis of that comes from when I lived in California uh, around, uh, you know, I lived in California basically 2000, 1999 to 2010. And, and around 2003, I, I started taking seminars. You can't live in California. Uh, well, you can, but not from these schools and not end up taking like personal self-help seminars. I just love that. And one of the, the things um, and I did a lot, a lot of seminars with Landmark Education. And depending on how old you are, you might remember um, Est and Werner Earhart and yep. and and was was a controversial figure. And, you know, at the time, either in Hollywood, you were either in Scientology or Est. <laughs> yeah. These are stories I heard. I, I was in Landmark. Um, but um, and during the seminars, like you really learn. Uh, to li like the 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 they said listen for the possibility in people right so that's I think that's kind of where it began was um and I don't want to say hokey or woo woo but like inside of like you know at one of those seminars I was taking the and a seminar leader said you don't listen you never have and you never will and that hit me. And I was like, oh, shit, because how many times you in a conversation with somebody, you think you're in a conversation with somebody. And you two are talking about two different things. <laughs> yeah. And so um, I don't know. So I, I so I, I I guess I learned it there, but I, you know, I didn't realize for lack of a better term, it, it was a superpower till I till I kind of got about 20 interviews in. And, and I, you know, and at the time when I first started, I was working with a producer, which was great because I wouldn't have got started without it. And, you know, after the first like 
five episodes, she was like, I don't really have a lot of notes for you. You're, you're kind of intuitive. Right. So, but that was a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, that's like, God damn. I mean, I still work with a coach, not Lemmer, but like, I mean, you're talking about someone who like is I'm someone who's committed to getting what I want out of life. And, um, you know, so that's like 15, that's a lot of years of just, coaching and being willing to shut my mouth sure. and listen well it you know? seems like to me you've also got a broad base of knowledge which helps a lot like you'd be deadly on jeopardy at least up to a certain level maybe all the way but I, you know you i've seen people bring things up about their background and you are able to respond knowledgeably in some way, shape, or form about just about everything. I don't hear you get stumped a lot. And that has to help a lot just to be able to riff at least somewhat knowledgeably with people on all sorts of subjects. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, that that's one of the, uh, the uh, advantages of being a fuck up. Or I, I I joke, but but someone who like like I I'm so curious like I, I go down rabbit holes, and I, I and I would say jack of all trades, master of none. Except now I'm really wanting to master what I do, like you said with the interviewing, like and and the conversations. But yeah, no, it is very. That was another thing my uh, producer used to say. She's like, well, how do you know that? Like 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 how, like like uh, you know, um, just like an odd. I don't know uh, my brain I have a really good memory and 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 like I can pick up on things little nuance and um and uh I'm looking to get related to the person and it's never forced I mean it's never forced I mean you know like Eric Azimov did martial arts. I didn't know he did martial arts, so we started mm -hmm. talking and I'm like, oh, he did Aikido. I'm like, oh, do you know hop keto? He's like, no. Well, it's a blend of Aikido and Taekwondo, you know, and, and that just happens over or like, I don't know. So, you know, these things that um, would normally be um, disparate work when you are having conversations with people. And, um, you know, to your point about Jeopardy, I, I never tried out for Jeopardy, but if you remember remote control on MTV, I was on remote control <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> and I lost because I knew the answer and you can't buzz in before they finish the question. So I was too smart for my own good. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, and of course I was cocky. So like I bet all my points because I wanted to blow everybody out. <laughs> so I ended up losing my like, you know, he, the guy won 10 to nothing. <laughs> You know, um, actually, I just got somebody, Phil from Santa Barbara Vintner, said he loved that show. So, um, <laughs> obviously, it had a fandom there for a little while. Uh, what um, So, Murray, for a little while, was hosting or was producing all of the Hall uh, videos during happy hour. You kind of remember that. And yeah. he would do one a day for five days, you know, five days a week. And so, I remember she would finish up one, and then she would start studying for the next one and which was the next day and you know it went from somebody from Schitt's Creek or a marathon runner to uh, somebody who played King George and Hamilton to uh, just all over the place and it's it's something to be able to capture some level of knowledge about a lot of different things yeah I mean yeah I I've, I mean I like I'm someone I mean I'm fortunate I don't know what it, like I a lot of this goes to my mother, who was a great, who was very funny, was very, a uh, very articulate speaker. And, um, but, you know, I'm someone, I went out to Paso Robles a couple weeks ago and I did seven interviews in two and a half days, just ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. Ba. And, and, and it's one of those things where I, when you're in it, you don't think about it. But like the, I was really thinking about like, you think about a talk show, right? It's produced every day, like the Conan O'Brien show or the Tonight Show. It's produced every day. They have writers, um, you know, uh, and it's a different guest every day. Yeah. Imagine on that Saturday, I did eight hours of, I did four interviews back to back to back to back. So to be able to, 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 to be present with each guest 
and pull out the nuggets that are there. Um, I mean, that's, it, it's a gift, but I do work at it. I mean, like I've done 150 podcasts. I've probably done another hundred or more IG lives. So I do put my reps in, so to speak, but, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know do of anybody else who would do that. That whole thing where you got to put in how many hours is it? Like 10,000, 10,000 hours. hours. Um, I don't necessarily, I mean, I, I'm a believer it's too full, right? There is natural talent. And then you gotta hone it, right? So, yeah. um, so I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't, I'm not a scientist. I, I've read the book. Mm -hmm. Um, there is there's some validity to it, but in certain things, I think if you, um, if you, uh, if you love it, I'm, so here's how I best can express it. Allen Iverson, fucking one of the greatest athletes of our time. He's just a great athlete. Yeah. Right. And and most people don't know a better football player than basketball player. He was Michael Vick before Michael Vick. Um, Kobe Bryant, incredible athlete, but he loved what he did so much. He put in more work in the gym. Right. And that's and, and Iverson will talk about that. You know, I, I mean, so but does that make Allen Iverson any less of a, a Hall of Famer? No, he, he had a lot of talent. Right. So it's catch 22. I mean, yes, hard work can can um, help if you're less talented, but you have to have some acumen at something. There's no one who is just flat ass shitty at something. You could work a hundred thousand hours. And, and if you just don't have the aptitude, you've just spent a hundred thousand hours of your life. And I don't even know if that's possible to do the math on that. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, So one of the things in kind of reading, and I, I don't want to do this whole biographical thing other than jumping in here or there. Cause I, I wanted I've found when I've done some of these interviews before that I kind of get off track occasionally by spending too much time in the history and then don't get to current things that are going on. So yeah. one of the things though that you brought up now was your mom um, uh, and she was a Jehovah's Witness, I believe. Yeah. I, I grew up in a strict Southern Baptist household. I wasn't drinking. I assume you weren't drinking growing up. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, drinking like sneaking drinking, but no, it was not like, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, like, um, you know, I remember my father, not religious, not a Jehovah Witness at all. Yeah. He didn't drink. He drank twice a year. He would in the summer, he would uh, make his own pina coladas. He'd get a pineapple. He'd get coconut. He'd make his own cream of coconut. And he would like for a week, he would drink. He liked rum. He would drink fucking pina coladas that he would make from scratch uh, around Christmas. My mo we didn't celebrate Christmas because Mother Joe witness and you know mom runs a house, but he would make his own eggnog. I mean, make I mean he'd make eggnog, right? My mother growing up, every night she'd have one Schaefer beer and some peanuts. She was from Georgia, so mm -hmm. it wasn't like it wasn't like. Um, I think some people think Joe witnesses don't drink at all. It's not that fundamental. Okay. I mean, it, although every religion, like you know this, if you grow, every religion has people who are, who are more into the religion. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and their interpretation. But um, no, what I think the best thing. So, no, I mean, no, we weren't. There wasn't wine on the table. There might be some white Zinfandel every now and then. Um, uh, you know, I had some older cousins that I would drink with, you know, and my mom would know I would drink. She wouldn't, you know, be too, you know, she wouldn't. I think she's more lean and weak than my sister who was older because I was a boy. You know, it wasn't a big deal, but it wasn't like. Um. You know, I know it's not like I could crack open a beer in my house at 15, sure. like some kids can in, in front of their parents and like, you know, um, and uh, the biggest thing with her was the public speaking. So I don't know. It wasn't the listening, but having to do Bible readings from the age of like six and yeah. seven and having to go out and knock on people's doors and 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 try to talk to them about the Watchtower Wake magazine. Um so I never, I would say that the best thing is I don't, I've never had a fear of public speaking. It was I mean, I had a little bit, first time I had to give a Bible reading, but you know, like you grow up from six to like 16, having to do that shit once or twice a month or, you know, in front of a congregation, you know, and then having to go to strangers house and knock on their doors and get the door slammed in your face. Um, it, it, it actually was, it helps a lot. Sure. 
you have know? you ever had any interviews or any of these other things where I, I don't know one or two things either for some reason you were nervous about the person or you had so much stuff that you wanted to get out that you kind of fucked it up along the way you, you know I mean there's so many questions have you ever had any of these that you look at that you're like oh, I did not do well on that one I will say um <clears throat> no and not even at a cockaway just I remember when I kind of realized I might uh, be good at this was the, my, the interview with Eric Azimov for the New York times. And, and I remember walking home from the train station because it's about three quarters of a mile from my house after. And I remember, and just thinking, because my mom passed away in 2019, I was like, mama, your little boy just sat down with the wine critic for the New York times and went toe to toe. Not it was, it was not, you know, and I've had, um, JJ Reddick, who is an NBA analyst, top podcaster, come on. I've had Isaiah Thomas from the Detroit Pistons, bad boys. And, you know, Isaiah Thomas gave me a great compliment, which unfortunately the engineer cut the shit off. Like, just to look <laughs> like he's like, yo, MJ, he's like, you asked some really good questions better than I was ever asked when I was in the NBA. Like, um, and I don't have set questions. It's it's very. I do riff. I, it's kind of like jazz for me. I, I I have an idea, but like like a jazz musician or a jam band, we might we might go over here for ten minutes that you didn't see coming because you said something, and I'm like, it's I, I have something that I can relate to, that I can use to draw more out of you, and and you've seen you, and I'm just probably I'm like I'm like that's the story right like people think they've answered a question and then we go through and and then like you know and i'll, and I'll come back like i can listen and interact but there'll be a point i have i'm, I'm really good in mentally of putting a pin in it and i'm like okay okay something you said a while back i want to just come back to you and unpack that um but there really hasn't been i thought there would be um, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk's been on, you know, 25 million, you know, um, whatever. Once, once I'm, once I'm in the studio, I'm locked and loaded. You know, I'm not, you know, there's no one. I, I don't think there's, I could, I literally could sit down with Barack Obama. I could sit down with anyone. I mean, I wouldn't want to sit down with some people, but I could sit down with anyone. Mm -hmm. and not be starstruck and and actually know that i would be able to elicit something out of them that they've never said before and not in a gotcha way just just because of like you said and it's hard to talk about yourself but like it's it's become obvious like the way i listen um i'm i'm listening between the lines i'm listening for what they're not saying you know um i'm listening for what they're really saying how they're trying and I don't want to say hide it, but you know, we're, we're kind of guarded. We're like, people don't, it's hard to talk about yourself. Yeah. Um, and so I'm listening to give people an opening to be like, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Is, is there anybody, and I'll limit it to the wine world here a little bit, just because, but is there anybody you really have wanted to get in front of, or even maybe they're not around anymore, you know, Robert Mondavi or something like that. I mean, is there anybody that you would be like, Oh my gosh, I, I would love to have that opportunity. Yeah. I mean, there's two people, you got uh, two people. I'm, I'm, I'm going to really push for uh, Robert Parker jr. Needs mm -hmm. to, I need to talk with Robert and Manfred Krenkel. Sure. Um, people who don't do a lot of interviews, but people who have been very influential, you know, Robert Parker jr. In my opinion, uh, is responsible for us even having a wine industry. Uh, people fucking want to shit on him, but he made wine accessible. You grew up in America. We all understand scores. We all took standardized tests in school. We all took the SAT. You went to grad school. You took the NPL. Like we understand scores. We understand sports. People like like like. Could you imagine if the Super Bowl is like? Well, it doesn't really matter. Like no, we understand scores. Yeah. Right. So. He made it quantifiable in terms of going to stand. And then Manfred Crankle, like when you talk about brand building and just coming out the gate and just what he's done, like those are two people I really am seeking and working on actively to sit down with, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and then, you know, I already interviewed you and Murray, so I'd be, I'd be good in wine. If I finished, if I got those two guys, you know, I, I'd be good. I'd be good yeah. with wine interviews.
um, I think your point on Parker is is well taken. And, you know, he gets tons of credit, but I also think personally he got tons of credit figuring out something that shouldn't have been that hard for us all to figure out, like scores. We got it. You know, you, you got a right. 92 on the test. Well, that was pretty damn good. Right, right. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's like, it's like, I like, here's what, I like people who like talk about, I don't believe in scores. I'm, you must fucking play T-ball. I didn't grow up playing T-ball. If you couldn't play hardball, you couldn't play baseball. If you couldn't get a baseball thrown at you, there was no, like, like you know, that's just like, the you know, separating the wheat from the chafe, right? Like, you yeah. know, if, and, and I love, and I, I, I don't love, but I, I, I find it, um humorous when people like if someone if like if the nattiest dirtiest wine person got 100 points they would be lauding it see they would be so freaking happy but they know it's not going to because the wine is freaking flawed it got shit wrong so then you go on this grandstand like get in the game get in the game get in the game i remember it way back in 1996 vintage where jim lobby gave the only time I ever made a Carneros Pinot Noir, I gave it like an 86, which even back then was not very good. And then I'm like, he, you know, he just doesn't understand Pinot. Jim doesn't really know Pinot. He's the cab guy. And then a couple of weeks later, he gave our Rose Vineyard Pinot like a 93. And I'm like, oh, Jim knows Pinot. All of a sudden, <laughs> in three weeks. He, He's a genius. <laughs> uh -huh. And you can't do that. You really can't be consistent when you're saying, you know, one time, I, you know, I disagree with all the scores this guy gives and he doesn't right. know something. And then right. the next time he knows it just because you like it helped you out or whatever. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. What do you think about where we are right now as far as reaching people with wine? I mean, I, I do think it was easier when we had Robert Parker giving scores out. And if you were a new winery, if you were Marais winery and you were brand new and you got a bunch of reviews, I mean, I promise you she would have been sold out and she's actually getting close to selling out because she's telling her story well. But that's different than, you know, with the numbers, it would, I mean, stuff would be gone in a couple of days, a week at the most. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I, you know, to your point, when you came on, you talked about, when he talked about you, uh, Greg Brewer came on. Like, Parker would say shit and people wouldn't even know because... It was a print newsletter too. There was no internet, right? Yep. And so I remember Greg Brewer coming on. He's like, "We came in the next day, and there's all these faxes had come oh, yeah. through, right?" Um, and I think what has happened, and this is, it's you know, this is like going to be an interesting thing for people to say based on, um, the fact that I have a podcast. But I will say this: I knew about podcasts in 2003. I just didn't know what I wanted to podcast about. Like I've. I've, I've always kind of been an early adopter like yourself. I know you, you know, you, you're very up on things, but um, what has happened now, everybody wants to have a podcast. Everybody's a fucking influencer, which I don't even really know what that means as someone who studied marketing. And I've, I'm looking at a book right here, Robert Cialdini influence. And those people have influence in all honesty. And, and, and um, so um, there's so much noise, right. And it was easier because people who drank wine, first of all, it's a different person who's going to pay $99 a year for a newsletter, right? Mm -hmm. Like people are so used to free shit. It's out of control. And, 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 and on one level you get what you pay for, right? So like who you're listening to someone because you like their dress or you think this guy is cool or you like her shoes. Um, but what, you know, or the commodities, commoditization of education with like most wine professionals did not have a WSET when mm -hmm. I was in the, the 90s or even early two, it wasn't like so so now you have this you have a a system where um it's about being first and it's about you know I was thinking about it's like breaking news right like people just tweet shit or thread shit or post shit on Instagram. It's not fact checked. It's not, you know, and, and there's this assumption because they have a lot of followers, a lot of followers, which they don't, that's a whole nother thing we can get into um, <clears throat> that they know what they're talking about. Um, so it's very important 
to find the right mediums and tell your story. Yeah. Which, which, you know, and, and I like to think I'm the right medium. I'm, I've, I've kind of become like this. I'm, 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 I'm actually, I have a lot of my listeners are in the industry because people like, I know Adam for 20 years. I didn't know that about Adam. Like people, let's come to my podcast and find out about the inside stuff about you guys. Right. Um, but it, it is storytelling or story selling. I'm looking at a book right now. I'm looking at two books. Like if you don't understand, I, the marketing I've studied over the past 17 years for internet is uh, I'm, I'm looking at two books. I need to lead with a story and whoever tells the best story wins. And that's where we're at right now. Yeah. Um, and then when that story is backed up with the scores, it's a no brainer, but the people who, who buy, who, who buy Jeb Dunnick, who wine advocate, um, um, they want to cut to the chase. Right. And they have the more disposable income. So they're going to buy that wine uh, they've learned how to calibrate their palate with the critic and then they'll try it and then they'll go on, right? That's a different customer than someone who's scrolling through Instagram and likes a post and like, I like her outfit. That must be a good wine, you know? Yeah. So telling the story, I think the hard thing there is the number of, it's kind of like with distributors, the number of outlets is more limited and unfortunately the outlets um well distributors maybe they make coin but it's hard for a lot of y'all that are good at telling stories dave mcintyre for the washington post writes stories it, you don't read it for it, 91 points versus 93 points or whatever right. you get same thing you know you talk about the wines you talk about the people you get the story behind it but it's hard to make money doing that mm -hmm. No, I, I'll be the first to tell you. I mean, I mean, I'm working. I mean, I'm working on. You know, the next evolution is is to turn this into a TV show, where I'm like, um, and I've done a lot. Of, you know, over the past two years, I've been to Walla Walla a number of times mm -hmm. and done live podcasts and recorded interviews. I was just like, so I was just out in Paso Robles. I'm going back to Paso Robles in a month. I'm doing a live podcast. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and, uh, when I was, Lisa Parati Brown was recorded in Italy. We were both in Italy yep. at the wine of business and, um, <clears throat> and we sat down and did that. So, um, it is about, I, I, my vision is to, um, to, uh, do kind of with wine, with the stories, like, uh, what Bourdain did with food and, 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 you know, that I, I think people don't understand like everybody wants to be Anthony Bourdain, but a lot of people don't understand what he, he, he was a philosopher and, and he used food and meals to sit down with people. Right. That's kind of what I do at wine. Like I, yeah, I know a lot about wine, but I'm not going to get an NW. I'm not going to even get a WSET one. Cause I could probably pass up to level two easily just so when I know, but I don't, I am as someone who has a, a, a JD, and doesn't use it. I don't need any more fucking pieces of paper. I'm not paying for sure. any more fucking education. I got books all around me. I know how to read. I know how to comprehend what I read. And uh, so, um, but for me, like at the end of the day, um, this is great for bringing people together. Before we started, me, you, and Marae were talking. We were joking. We were talking. We were on like the religious background. We were talking about Jesus and water and wine. What did Jesus do? Break bread. He drank wine with people, right? Um, he kind of loosened them up so they would go out and do his bidding. Um, <laughs> not to, but um, but um, you know, as technical as we can get, and in the dirt, there's a, there's a time for that. But I, I really think ninety nine percent of the population doesn't give a fuck and yeah. just just wants something that tastes good and wants to be around cool people and interesting people. So one of the things I found most interesting, and I'd love your thoughts on this, the biggest hits I had recently from like sales was where one of my wines was written up in Rob Report, which is for rich people. Magazine, I mean, it's not cheap to subscribe. It's very rich. No, it's like it's like $15. If you buy one, if it's $15 an issue, you go buy one. That shit's yeah. not cheap, yeah. Uh, but it seems to me that there is a whole group of people that subscribe to Rob Report that are aspirational. They can't afford the private jet. They can't afford the, the private chef or this or that. But when they see a bottle of wine that's $99, they're like, oh, crap, I can drink what the really, really rich people are drinking for 99 bucks kind of thing. Yeah, no, I think exactly. I mean, that's that's one of the um, 
the the the, the uh, on one end of the spectrum you have the Rob Report, and then on the other end you you have the the quote unquote social media influencer, right? So yeah. I don't think because I I love retail and you started retail. I love yeah. there's something spe- just because something gets fifty thousand likes does not translate to. 50,000 bottles of wine sold. Yeah. And, 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 and I'll be honest, I think fucking PR agencies are about to be out of business because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, They don't understand the new landscape because again, if, if you may not be able to own a private jet, but if you're, if you, if you go buy a $15 magazine, um, it, you, you have aspirations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you're putting skin in the game. There's no skin in the game just on social media. I mean, that's why, I mean, I use, I use, but like my thing is my freaking podcast. My thing is building my email list. My thing is looking for people who value what I say. And most people on social media don't actually value the content out there. Sure. Um, And, and so, yeah, like, like someone who, who buys Rob report, like they've invested, they, they like, they have the aspiration is so good and they have some drive. I'm looking again, man. Fuck. If you, I'm looking at a, a blog I read daily. It's called a learning a day. And I printed one out and one of them. And then when I print it out, I'm looking around, it says most people won't, you know, most people want to be fit, but won't most people want to build a set. But most people won't. Most people want to um, live a life that they want, but they won't, they won't do what it takes. And and someone who invests, I mean this 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 thing right here is so hypnotic, you yeah. know. It's just easy to get lost in it. But you know the fact that the Rob Report, like, look how many magazines have gone out of business, right? Yeah. But that but, but that is for a very niche segment of the population. Yeah. And I think going make it a long answer. It's important to find your niche, right? It's important to find. Adam's people. It's important to find Marais people, right? It's important, and, and that's the reality. Is and you know this because you you you're from Texas, and you you make wine. You're like your good friend Gary Pisoni kept drilling and drilling. It's better to go deep than go wide. Yep. And I think, um, you know, um, that is the key. Like social media is so wide, right? But you really want the people who are going to go deep with you. Do you think with social media, when it comes down to it, I mean, obviously wineries pay a lot of attention to it, but I don't think any of them have figured out how to really make money or how it really helps them that much at all. Part of it's the nature of it. It's small bits. It's little things. You can't get a, a real story to it. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm Adam, I'm, I'm literally going to put together a marketing course for you because like, I look like even, and I have some friends who are good, who, who are good in wine and create great content, but still like how many people actually watch a three minute video? Like the average thing, like, is like, it's like 15 seconds. Right. So how, like, like, I think you, you, you've done a good job. Like it's taking control. Like it's not the PR person. It really is going to, I think the future is in, people learning how to do their own media because like, why are you paying? Like it's probably better and not probably without a doubt, it's better to create some rough content off your phone and throw some dollars on it behind an Instagram or Facebook post than to pay someone $3,000 a month to tell you to go find like this, this, this influencer and that influencer who's never had your fucking wine. Right. And and who's just holding up because they got paid five hundred thousand bucks or sometimes even more, um, you know. Uh, and and really, there's a great book about it. It's written years ago. It's called Tribes by Seth Godin, who's a thought leader. Mark and 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 it, it, the people who are who are going to win are the people who find their tribe. And another thing that I've talked about before, there's another great essay, Kevin Kelly, who started Wired. A thousand true fans. If you have a thousand people who who will buy whatever you put out, you're good. Yeah. You're good to go. 
uh, do you see AI changing what you're doing, where you're heading, anything there with the yeah, line? I, I, yeah, I mean, AI has helped me a lot. I use I use AI to create my video clips mm -hmm. um, um, because it knows the algorithm, but also like I used to go through, I can upload this thing and it just spits out 30 fucking clips and then rates them. That used to take me like two, three hours, me going through what I think is cool. And what you know what? And, and here's the thing. I want you to listen to the whole episode, right? And 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 I if you're listening to me, um you, I think you value what I say and you value my opinion and my and my kind of my viewpoints and what I'm bringing forth. But also I don't know it all. I'm also a person like I don't know it all. And like I said, I'm an early adopter. So like, yes, I don't think AI can ever like I like AI can't do what I can do, but it can it frees me up to do what I do, right? Like instead of spending hours editing and writing show notes, I get AI, will spit out stuff, and then I edit it, review it, change it. Saves me a lot of time. So as a solopreneur, um, you know, and now I'm like I'm not working with a producer. I had, I had to learn editing. Like it, AI has helped me immensely, but you know. I also, you know, am, you know, I, I love the Matrix movies. And, you know, once we fucking start letting these machines do too much for us, we're fucked. So, you know, I'm not going, not fully down that route, you know. Sure. I was amazed. So I did this AI newsletter. I think I sent it to you. But it was really yeah, it did, yeah. largely written to a large extent by AI photos, mid-journey, that kind of thing. And the number of people are reached out to me saying, Hey, if you're going to be doing this, I I'm done. I don't want to like subscribe to your stuff anymore. Uh, and I get it. I think like you're saying your content um, has to be yours. It's something AI cannot do what you're doing. And they want to hear from me from the, in the newsletter, but you know, AI can write my little party invite. If I just had a party invite and say, we're having a party Tuesday, this day, whatever, it can make it better. It can select your clips that are better ones. Right. Those clips are original to you. Right, right. I created the clips. They just, they just, no, I, I listen, that's the whole, the whole myth of the social media influencer and the YouTube star. Like that's, people don't know the fucking work that goes behind that. Like it's, just, you have to have the right fucking thumbnail. And it's like, it's understanding so many things that I can't understand. What I like to do is get to know people. Right. Um, and yeah, to, to, to your point, like, first of all, you were extremely transparent. You told people this was generated by AI, blah, 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 you yeah. know? Um, and, um, you know, but, I know I'm heavy into the copywriting well world and internet marketing, direct, real direct response marketing, and how a lot of people are using it. We use it for prompts and ideas, right? Like, it, like it's like there's you there never should be writer's block, but you just like I need give me twenty ideas for a blog post about Pinot Noir and San Lucia Highlands, and it will give you twenty ideas, and then you could run with that. Yeah, right. And so, so, so I think. I think, and and actually what's going to happen, you are, people. obviously it's, it becomes like these fucking videos. People, like it's AI talking. Well, this is Clarice Pinot Noir from the Chantelichia Island. Adam Howard Lee was a winemaker at the door. Like, like the, I'm like, who is listening to that shit? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Um. So it is just like to your point, Adam, would you like, was, was winemaking different in, in, uh 50 bc and or or 50 ad than it is now yeah so it's responsible use of the tools right yeah it's responsible use of the tools yeah i i have this idea i'll run it out here in front of everybody and marae's <laughs> gonna jump in it's like oh shit you got an idea adam because she hates that because i um dude you've texted me at like three o'clock in the morning, your time. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? Are you? Like, and I'll wake up. I'm like, why were you still up? He's like, I didn't go to sleep. I had an idea. <laughs> yeah, no, I figured you're on the East Coast. I'm like, all right, who can I bother at this time? <laughs> MJ, I'll send MJ something. <laughs> um, uh, that because social media is, or, or like influencers on social media is 
actually so limited and actually, in my mind, a lot of times um, a fairly shallow medium based on what the medium is, not necessarily the people, but whatever mm -hmm. you could like it's I read something like one of the top 10 influencers out there is not real. It's a created AI. That's creator. a whole other thing, too. Yeah, that's a great fucking point. Like it's like, I mean, to your point with AI, like it's so scary. I mean, deep fakes, right? Like 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 we we saw this in the last election, like like they're they, they literally. When you're a real person. You, and you learn in that market, like who's your avatar, right? Now there literally are avatars that yeah. aren't real, that aren't real, and and a lot of people don't know this. This was what the whole Hollywood strike was about. It was like they wanted to take actors' faces and own their face, and then they could let AI generate their voice and do it. Like so, it, you know, I'm actually thinking. Every sci-fi movie, we're in. We're gonna end up going back to like, like I've thought about doing a newsletter, um, but I, I like what I'm doing. I want to. I want to take the the show and the stories bigger. But like, if I did a newsletter, it would be paper. I would not do digital. Sure. Not like and everybody's doing digital. James, Jeb, uh, one everybody. I would not. Because, you know, it's like the Netflix password. You give someone your password, blah, 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 blah. Um, um, but, like, hard letter. Like, if someone wants to fucking scan my shit in and put it up on Reddit, God bless them. But, like, but like I, you know, I think that's going to be one of the differentiators between people. You know, uh, I don't know if you still mail, Sine Qua Non still mails letters, right? Yep, yep. Rejection, offer letters and rejection letters. Um I love getting that piece of mail and the artwork. It's just like music, right? Fucking, I hate streaming because there's no artwork, right? Yeah. Albums, it was, the album was a whole thing. It was not just, it, you had to have eight tights, eight to nine tight ass songs. And then you got some killer artwork. And the size of an album it was, it was art. CDs were a little small. Streaming, is, it's a fucking thumbnail, right? So I think, people are going to go, we're going to see like a reversion to old forms of media because they'll be more trustworthy. Well, and albums, some, not all did, but some albums told a story throughout from beginning to end on the album. I mean, there was a reason the songs were in the order. In that order. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing too. The CD fucked that up because you could jump ahead, right? Yeah. But like, unless you want to scratch your shit up, you put your album on, you listen to side one or side A, and side B, and it was, it was a story. They were they were ordered specifically. Yeah. Specifically. That better than eight tracks though, when it would like fade oh, out and click oh in the my middle. God. <laughs> oh my god. Eight great sound, but like just was not the technology. No, it wasn't. No, I miss that. Ray and I actually do collect albums now of certain things, not as many as you can. And you're actually paying a premium for them right now, but it is. You get the artwork. I always think there's some BS involved. I, I remember I was a big Cure fan back in college, and they kept coming out with this single that had a different B side. And if you felt like you had to collect everything, you know, and I was. Oh like, yeah, I mean, oh. I mean, that's totally. I love that. Like it was like it was like the DJ, uh, you know, Cool Bob Love remix or the DJ Adam Lee remix of the yeah. song, right? So. And like you, and because you're putting it on wax, like, you know, 12 inch albums, you, you know, if you're a fan, you're buying everything. Right. But I, it made me feel like, uh, ultimately I kind of started to feel like, okay, they're just trying to take advantage of me of for money. Sometimes the stuff on the B side was really good, but sometimes it was crap. I mean, it, it's like, <laughs> what, why did they put this out? <laughs> so. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I totally agree. Um, I don't know if you've seen the comments, some good comments. You say, I love it. Oh, yeah. No, I get it. Like, so, you know, here's somebody paying for disintegration for the backside for the cure. And yeah, it's, um, I remember that, that, that kind of thing. And I'm a college kid and I can't afford this stuff. And I'd go down to the store and I'd still buy it. Um, it was, it was tough. Um, so I think, you know, quality of content and I think the stories and what you're doing and telling the stories is important. 
I've seen something, I wanted to ask you about this. It's not related to wine and all that, but I'm starting to see it advertised on Instagram. And I think it's really pretty cool where they're like, you waste, how much time do you waste, you know, scrolling in the mornings? How much time? Um, take six or seven minutes out of your day. And here's a series of six or seven minute lessons about important things in the world that you can subscribe to this. So you can learn about the important things in the world. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but like historically, you want to learn about Julius Caesar. Why was he killed? What was, you know, all of this kind of thing. And they put it together in a little seven minute session. And I'm like, that's fantastic. That's a, a neat way of taking your 15 minutes that you scroll and at least half of it's worth something yeah no i think that's great um i think that is great i'm not that guy when i was in italy i was on a panel back in november and i was with uh adam teeter who's vine pair and their podcast and uh you know they're super well funded um and and you know their podcasts i believe are like 23 minutes because that's the average commute yeah man right? mm -hmm. that's fine and, and so i said i said i get it i said my podcast, when I started podcast, I looked at Tim Ferriss and uh, Joe Rogan, two most successful podcasters ever. Joe Rogan has fucking four hour podcasts. Now, I don't know who's listening to that shit, but it got him $200 million from Spotify, right? Yeah. I mean, so like, um, you know, Tim Ferriss, long form. Tim Ferriss would do the shit where uh, drunken podcasts, you know, where he drank and drunk. So um, I, I think those type of what you're talking about are great if you got a team and you got editors and you're really sharp um you know i make everybody sign a waiver because like i'm not trying to edit shit and and actually for me it's like what we're doing now we're having a little bit of wine but we did in real life right we're yeah. in a bar we're in a bar having a conversation we're gonna have a conversation and it's gonna go where it goes and we're gonna go off on tangents and i think I hate this word because it got overused, but the authenticity of, of it is what I think resonates with a lot of people. Yeah. So I've had a couple people ask about like subscribing to your podcast. I mean, do you subscribe? Do you go at, what's what's the best way just to like hook up with you and and be part of it? Your your scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's a great question. What really I mean, here's where you go. Um what really helps is go to your platform and it's either subscribe. I think they changed it to follow now and mm -hmm. follow the podcast. It gets downloaded automatically. You'll, you'll probably have a bunch of them, but what, how that helps, ha helps is um, podcasts still haven't figured themselves out yet, in my opinion. Um, so um, uh, people look at the number of downloads. Some, some people don't download it. Some people just stream it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, 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 and it's really hard to calculate streams. So, um, you know, it is, um, yeah, I think that's the best thing you can do is just follow it. Um, and, and, you know, that support, because then when I have to go out and I'm trying to explain, I'm like, well, I have X amount of, uh, downloads an episode, you yeah. know, uh, and, and that's again, and, and it's, it catch 22, um, Kind of talking about scores, like I think people are keeping the wrong score though with podcasts. So that 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 I think we just have we have to figure out a uh, 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 a better way to score them that people can understand them. But yeah, that definitely helps me when people are automatically a new episode comes out, it gets downloaded, and just catch up when you can, right? Like 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 you know, it's not it's not a huge deal, right? Like just like at least you get that notification, like oh shit, MJ just dropped another episode. Oh wow, I'm I'm. Yeah five behind now okay so i think that really helps versus you know um just trying to catch it and i drop and i i've tried to drop consistently every monday for the past four years and sometimes it gets pushed but pretty consistent with a monday drop well but, and it was great on the drive i was like oops i gotta take a piss i'm gonna stop and pull over <laughs> or, you know i'm hungry and so i gotta go through the drive through and you'd stop and you know you that kind of thing you can pause it and and then uh and jump back in yeah and you know i'm looking at some of the questions for marae asked i want to ask answer marae's question she just yeah. jumped in but marae i the i you know i asked like i asked you for a bio but really a lot of stuff comes in um and adam talked about when i do the 20 questions of mj where i i ask you 
personal questions, not really personal questions, like what's your favorite book? What TV show do you, you know, who's your favorite athlete? Then I get a glimpse inside of you, right? It gives me a, just enough of a glimpse so that when we start the, the podcast proper, um, I'm looking, you know, it, it sets off uh, sensors for me to connect the things you shared before. Um, I come in with like these show notes and literally just cause I started them, but it's like, uh, where are you from? Uh, siblings, wine on the table, college. Like I don't have like real, the questions happen organically, Moray, um, as we have conversation cause it, cause of my curiosity. Um, yeah. So. Well, and I told you that would be the book I would publish if I from you or whatever. And it's it's a really silly book kind of thing, but it would seem like it would be more of the compilation of stuff that you've already done rather than writing something new. All these people you've turned around and asked 20 questions of. Oh, yeah. No, I'm I'm just I'm not lazy. Um, I've been no. so focused on this. But that has to happen because that's that's another key thing of content on the internet is repurposing it, right? Like I asked the question, it's not, you know, and and I've only put a few of those out there. Like most people don't know the 20 questions. Like, so I'm I'm gonna drop episode 149, and you know, that's 149 people, or at least 145 that I've asked 10 to 20 questions of. You know, I need to download my IG lives. That's another, you know, hundred. Um, and th that's the fun. Like some of them, like I like I'm dropping Justin Smith from Saxon this week. Yeah. And like sometimes the 20 questions is 10 minutes, sometimes it's a half a fucking hour. Cause people like I, I let people go. Like, and that one we were at, we were there in the studio. I kind of cut people down because we but like if I'm there, people I get so much in those 20 questions about people and they, and then it become comfortable. Like, Oh, he know, you know, like, you know, like the funny one I should put like Lyle Railsback who worked for Kurt Lynch was like, asked him like something about his brother. He's like, yeah, I, 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 I told my brother to take a shit on the lawn when the kids like, like, that's like, 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 like that's just brother. That's sibling, sibling stuff that, doesn't it's not going to come out in the wine spectator right <laughs> that's well, not, it's not, not going to come out in the wine spectator and there are people in life who ask their brother to take a shit on the lawn and exactly like, and there are brothers who take a shit on the lawn when they're <laughs> when they're, asked them. And, I mean, right. they're, they're different people mm. right and 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 i think that's what i've always tried to do is like what where are we common at like 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 you know what like what like like remember that time you did too much tequila and fucking threw up in the fucking alley uh, by the bar, you know, projectile vomited, or you know, you got so drunk, you know, the 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 chick walked away from you, or what? I mean, like we that's all happened to us, and then we laugh, and then we relate. You're like, oh, Adam, Adam makes great wines, but he's just a guy like me, man. You know, he grew up in a fundamentalist house in Texas, and fucking. And, you know, and we both are doing different things now. And then I'm out drinking with Gary Pizzoni. You know, yeah, exactly. who knows how you get there? That's the question is how you go from that fundamentalist house to drinking with Gary Pizzoni. That's where the good stuff is. Oh, my God. Yeah, God damn. Now, there's a guy I need to have on the podcast, but Gary, I don't know, man. I saw Gary. I saw Gary when I saw you guys back back in July. And, and Gary didn't fucking remember you. And I'm the first person to ever fucking visit him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so um but that that's a guy who's got stories right you know oh yeah oh yeah very much well um we're kind of getting near the end here um tell me what so you've got justin smith coming up i mean is there a particular and you're heading out to paso again you said coming up yeah paso's just that's that's um gonna be a live podcast at a vineyard at jada vineyard um but actually i mean i will share this with you guys uh this is uh, um so um, there's only like like three or four episodes of the Black Wine Guy Experience left. Um, so I am actually rebranding it. Um, it's going to be called Beats, Vines, and Life um, because that's more who I am. Like I, I, uh, I, you know, the first article I've written me was by R. H. Drexel, and it's like uh, chatting with M. J. Tao, the intersection of wine and music. That's my my thing, and I've for. I've had so much fun. Um, not all winemakers are great. Like, I mean, 
your phenomenal story, Murray, but not some of them were like pulling teeth, right? But like when I sit down with like an NBA player, like and 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 you know, and, and ask these questions, like I think that I am a good enough interviewer to sit down with anybody. I don't want to be limited because people think it's just about wine. I have to explain to people sometimes. No, 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 no. It's not just about wine. I, I like wine. And so um, I think that's going to open this up to where I want to be, where it becomes this uh, a show about life, about the commonalities in life, about music. I mean, if there's fucking anything more universal than music, oh, my God. Yeah. Come on. Well, one um, of my silly questions I came up with you was Pac or Biggie, if you had to choose. Oh, uh, that's, that's that's Biggie. That's okay. easy. I mean, that's an East Coast thing. I mean. I know. That's what I was going with. You're an East Coast guy. So. I mean, but I mean, I mean, I will tell you, <laughs> I like Pac's last album, you know, Only God Can Judge Me. You know, that's a good album. Yeah. But like, but like, you know, I, I think, I think Tupac, Tupac let us down because he chose to act like a thug. He wasn't a thug. He went to the School of the Arts in Baltimore. He was a very yeah. smart person. And I'm not saying you can't be smart in hip hop, but like he he went a route. He went a route that ended up in him and Biggie being dead. Yeah. Right? I think I think I saw that. And just Adonis, yes, Adonis. I'm gonna do some interviews at Walla Walla Hospice. Matter of fact, I'm gonna call you because I want to hit up dossier for a personal. But I am gonna be doing the thing I did, where interviewing people. Are you guys, you and Ray, coming to hospice? I know you, and, and you don't make a lot. I, of We stuff. got our own project. We have not because we're gonna have it next year. So we are okay. gonna be big time there. The next 2026. Year. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Um, cool. Well, this has been fantastic. I look forward to Beats, Vines, and Life. That's gonna be fun to, um, because I think that does open up a lot of different things. For yeah, it. yeah, and 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 to you know to your point, like like then it becomes like you know wine has these weird marketing laws, but I fall I'll fall firmly in luxury, so uh, Lexus could come on board, Rolex, because you know, and then bring in the bigger guests. So it's I think it's going to be really good. Uh, allow me to keep bringing these stories to people. That's what it's about. It's allowing me to keep bringing these stories to people. Right? Can you do group things? I'll do this real quick. I, I was done, but then real quick. Like in person, I would think. I think online it's hard because people step on each other's toes and stuff in some ways. But yeah, online it's tough. But yeah, no, definitely. Um, I, I that's another thing too. Looking at doing events, you know, I like doing live podcasts, but also doing events. And um, me and you should talk because I love your entrepreneurial mind. Uh, you and Moray have been great supporters. Um, so let's do some shit. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, MJ. Everybody, um, you can unmute. Tell uh, um, MJ thanks. Definitely. Um. I assume if you're subscribing to Black Wine Guy on podcast or following, I guess it is now, will it transfer over? How does that work? Yeah, I'm just, it's going to be the same feed. It, it, you'll get an email. So yeah, it won't, I'm not starting a whole new show. I'm just going to change the artwork, change the name and, uh, and I'll, and if you're on the list, the email list, um, you'll definitely get an announcement, but you know, I, uh, thanks for having me. And I'm glad I like, you're the, like, this is the first Obviously, there's been a tight group that's been shared, but this is like the first outside group that I've shared this with. Yeah, well, it's going to get posted. This will get posted to my YouTube channel, and then it'll get sent out to Claire East members as well. So you'll, um, it'll reach a lot of people from there too. So some people will hear about it. More people will hear about it than we're here. <laughs> Great, I love. It. Well, that's that's this thing, right? Like even, yeah. you know, that I mean, it's it's the after effect, right? So yeah. Thank you again. Thanks, MJ. A, good evening. Adam, Enjoy thank you for doing this, MJ. Good thank to see you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank, thanks for hanging in there with us, everybody. And and Phil, Santa Barbara is actually my wine home. So I'm trying to get back. I'm good friends with Greg Brewer and, and Sonia Magdevsky, and I'm trying to get do something there. So uh, hit me up, blackwineguy at gmail.com. Let's figure something out. You're with the Vintners Association. Let's do it. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you. Cheers. Bye, Marta. Bye, Scott. Good to Bye. see you. Bye. Good to see you.